Well, welcome to part three. Here we are going to look at the M11 unit. This is the standard best head for the Brownline series of power packs. The Brownline packs are typically thought of as low powered packs, but the older system had some bigger power packs like the 1600 series and the 1200 series that were fairly common back in the 80s, back when we were using lower ASA ratings than we are today with today's ISOs uh, with digital cameras. When you're shooting Kodachrome 25 or Ektachrome 64 Professional, the ISO was 64 or 25, and that is extremely low by today's standards. Um, with most Nikons starting out at ISO 200 today, you know, you go 25, 50, 100, 200, that makes a 400 watt second power pack in effect, you know, a 1600 watt second pack or a 3200 watt pack, depending on your starting point, however you look at it. So we don't require as much power today as was needed in the 1980s or the 1990s. The shift to digital has allowed us also a lot more flexibility in ISO bracketing as a way of controlling exposure. These packs do not offer incremental one-third click type of exposure adjustment. Well, so back to the, the, the power packs head here. This is the 1600's favorite head. This is the light head you need to use with the bigger power packs. This is an eBay special. I bought it from eBay for a low price. It has a fairly old, uncoated flash tube. Uh, the modeling light I took out, uh, it was burned out when it came. It does work though. This is a simple two pin base, 150 watt quartz lamp. It's very bright. Uh, it does throw a pretty hot beam and right in the center, the tip of these modeling lights has a very hot white spot which shows you the exact center of the beam. It's very useful in aiming at longer distances. You can see exactly where the hot spot is that represents the center of the beam. This is the standard universal reflector. This is what they call the universal. It's a really simple system. There are two screws in here that hold a stack of plastic washers with some uh, metal washers. The two lugs simply line up on there and then you twist. And then the light, it's on. It's pretty sturdy. You could hang from this. You know, if you weigh under 200 pounds, this is a very strong mounting system. Two lugs, um, a lot of bearing surface in here. Once it's pulled tight, it's a lot stouter than, say, the Ellen Chrome system or the Paul C. Buff, which is just like a little tin clamp. These reflectors, they're made of steel. They're not aluminum, they're steel. Uh, this one has taken a pretty good ding, but no prob, you know. It, it doesn't really affect it much. They have a sort of a semi-matte interior. They're pretty efficient, too. The standard M11 today has a 1200 watt second flash tube in it. It can handle up to 1200 watt seconds. The quartz, so-called quartz, or M11Q, has the highest wattage bulb available. And it's a 2400 watt second bulb. Um, I have one M11Q tube, the first one I bought in 1986, that still works. It still fires. That's because with a 2400 watt second maximum capacity, even with the largest power pack, the 1600, the tube is only working at two-thirds capacity. So that really helps in its longevity. These tubes do tend to last 20 years. Their biggest enemy, breakage. They don't wear out, they get broken. I've had a couple of them hit concrete from eight to nine feet and not, not break. I had one that went down and broke. Uh, I'm not really sure, it wasn't me that broke it. I heard it was from about nine feet. I wasn't there. Anyway, back to the Model 402. This is the power supply I think that most people are going to really want to have. Uh, it's really not that heavy. 
We'll go into it a little bit closer, but we're going to look at some other power packs next.